We have learned that uh, the compass has a needle that points towards north, the geographical north, or somewhere close to the geographical north, which is actually the magnetic south pole of the Earth when considered as a bar magnet. But anyway, so the way we name these poles is basically we look at where it points. So if you concentrate on your compass and you find that one part of the needle is pointing towards north, we call this a north seeking uh, pole is named north. And there is the other part of the compass which is basically pointing towards south. So we call the south seeking pole as south pole. And a famous experiment performed by Michel and Klomp. So we have uh, Michel in 1750 and Coulomb in 1785. They used this uh, torsion balance in order to find the force between two magnets and where they come from. So here you can see we have a support, a torsion wire, and we're hanging a magnetic needle at one end. When we uh, bring another magnet uh, close by, we see that uh, the, mag the, the needle that is hanging from the support through the torsion wire uh, will uh, rotate in one or two, in one or the other uh, direction. So basically, the, which direction it will rotate depends on uh, which poles are coming together. The opposite poles attract each other. If we have the north pole of the uh, the needle aligning with the uh, external uh, magnet, uh, the south pole of the external magnet, there is attraction. And if the, if we have the same poles aligning they will repel each other and we will see the effect on the rotation of the uh, wire. So basically, uh, they say that uh, because this effect is occurring depending on uh, what is happening at the end point of the needles, uh, the, the forces, uh, the con one of the conclusions is that the forces between two magnets originate in regions near the ends, the end points, and we call them magnetic poles. So these are the poles, the end points are magnetic poles. And uh, we have named them by basically looking at which way they point. So if we have a north seeking pole, we call it north, and we have a south seeking pole, we call it south. It depends on which way uh, they point uh, on Earth. So is it pointing towards geographical north? or pointing towards geographical south or somewhere close to geographical north and south. Uh, now they f also find that the uh, magnitude of the force between these uh, poles will depend on the pole strengths uh, and al also will depend on the distance between the poles. So that's the uh, second conclusion. Uh, the force between the poles is proportional to the product of their pole strengths and inversely 
proportional. to the square of the distance between them. So we can show this mathematically. Uh, the force between the two poles, and I'm going to do this using a CGS uh, point of view, centimeter gram second unit system and SI unit system and then we will talk about the conversion between these two. Uh, the force between the poles is measured in the CGS system in dynes and it is equal to the product of the pole strengths P1 and P2 divided by the distance R between them which is measured in centimeters. So um, R in centimeters. And similarly uh, by using SI units uh, we can write the force in newtons between the two poles. The force in newtons is mu zero divided by four pi p one p two over r squared, where r is now in meters. And the conversion between these two forces is basically 1 Newton is equal to 10 to the power 5 dynes. Uh, the mu zero that appears in the SI unit system is called permeability of free space. So that is assuming that we are measuring this, these forces uh, in vacuum not inside the material then you would have uh, instead of mu zero and a mu value for that particular medium and it is equal to 4 pi times 10 to minus 7 Weber's per ampere meter or Henry per meter so this is the SI uh, unit. Um, so um, the the Weber basically comes from the magnetic flux, and Henry comes from inductance. But we, we will talk about this uh, later. How about this pole strength that appears in in these unit systems P one and P two? Well, a unit pole is what we call a unit pole or a pole of unit strength. Is one which exerts a force of one dyne on another unit pole at a distance of one centimeter. Uh, so we don't have a particular name for this uh, unit, uh, unit of the pole strength. It's just a, a, it's just called pole strength or unit pole strength. So the pole strength is given in uh, multiples of the unit pole strength, and the unit pole strength is one which exerts a force of one line on another unit pole 
uh, at a distance of one centimeters. Uh, in SI, SI system, uh, the unit for pole strength is ampere meter. And one dyne, the definition of dyne basically comes from the following statement. One dyne of force gives a mass of one grams and acceleration of one centimeter per second squared that's F equals MA, Newton's second law. And let's have a remark here. Well, we know it is experimentally impossible to separate these poles In other words, magnetic monopoles, unlike electrical charges, do not exist. And that is basically given by uh, Maxwell's equations. Now, for charges, we have a Gauss law which states that the electrical flux E dot dA is equal to the charge enclosed divided by permittivity of free space epsilon zero while for uh, magnetic poles we have the Maxwell equation, the magnetic flux, total magnetic flux is equal to zero for an enclosed surface. Uh, in differential form, this is divergence of the electric field is a charge density divided by epsilon zero and divergence of the magnetic field is Zero. So this is from uh, something you will remember from your uh, electromagnetism uh, courses. So these are uh, two of Maxwell's equations which basically tell us that electrical charges do exist as separate quantities, positive and negative. However, magnetic monopoles do not exist or they cannot be separated. They always come in pairs. Um, so let's summarize what we said. Uh, well, the magnetic poles basically is what we call uh, the endpoints of two magnets that are that seem that seem to be interacting uh, when we have two uh, bar magnets uh, close together, and we can measure the effect of these forces on the bar magnets by looking at uh, the system uh, with a torsion balance. And we can see that the forces between the two magnets are originating near the end points that we call poles. And we name the poles according to which way they point on Earth. So if it's a north seeking pole, we call it north. If it's a south seeking pole, we call it south. And the torsion balance experiment shows us that the opposite poles attract, same poles repel, and the force between the poles is proportional to the product of their pole strengths, inversely proportional to the square of the distance r in between them. In CGS units, the force in dynes is given by P1, P2 divided by r squared, where the pole strengths are measured in units of unit pole strength. That's what we call it. And a unit pole 
exerts a force of one dyne on another unit pole at a distance of one centimeter. In SI units, the force in newtons is given by mu zero divided by four pi p one p two over r squared, where mu zero is permeability of free space, which is four pi ten to minus seven Weber's per ampere meter or Henry per meter, and the conversion between these two is one newton is ten to five dynes. In SI, we do have a unit for pole strength, it is ampere meters. And one dyne of force gives a mass of one gram, an acceleration of one centimeter per second square. And it is impossible to separate magnetic poles, magnetic monopoles do not exist. That is given by the Maxwell equation divergence of P is equal to zero, or total flux in an enclosed surface is zero. Uh, however, for charges, we have divergence of E is charge density rho divided by absolute zero, or the total electrical flux is Q enclosed divided by epsilon zero, which is Gauss law. So this is integral form and differential form of two Maxwell's equations um, that we can uh, recall from our electromagnetism uh, class. Uh, now, if you want to recall where these units of Henry and uh, Weber's come from, uh, we can have for inductance, uh, for example, um, if you have a number of uh, turns n multiplied by the flux that goes through each one of them, so the total flux divided by the current I uh, gives you, uh, so basically, uh, Weber's uh, turns divided by amperes, uh, so Weber divided by ampere is Henry. So basically this Weber divided by ampere per meter or Henry per meter comes from uh, this relationship and if you have the magnetic field uh, multiplied by the area so if you take the dot product with the field line and area you get the magnetic flux magnetic flux is um, the magnetic field b dot product with the area uh, we can have this measured in weber's so that is basically a um, tesla meter is weber's so basically this summarizes uh, the discussion on magnetic poles and uh, in the next video we will talk about uh, the magnetic field and magnetic flux in more detail and then I will go through a calculation uh, for unit conversion to uh, clarify how we can go in between the view of magnetic poles and the view of circulating currents that is given in the SI system.